Hi everyone, welcome back to the Worker Being channel. I'm Patricia Grabar. I'm Katina Sawyer, and today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of getting a little more movement in your day for facilitating your work-life balance. So some recent research has just come out that suggests that getting just some extra steps throughout the course of your day can actually help you to feel more balanced by the end of the day. Um, and we know that exercise in general, whatever makes you feel strong and healthy, engaging in that kind of movement can be useful for improving a lot of different things in your life from a well-being perspective. But we don't know a lot about how the steps you get while you're working or during your workday might actually affect the way you feel at the end of work um, and how that impacts your perceptions of balance. So this new research really helps us understand the value of getting up and moving around a little bit during the day. Yeah, so it's like very specific to the work day itself. And so not like you get 10,000 steps throughout your entire day, um, including after or before work. It's more about increasing your movement throughout the work day. So getting up, if you need to take a break and like pacing around your house or Maybe you have 10 minutes, you can take a little, you know, a little walk outside, or if you're working in an office, lap around the building, what have you. Um, so it's actually adding in that movement and those steps throughout your workday itself as a way to basically increase your energy. So um, in terms of that work, what was the most, like the most interesting takeaways do you think? Yeah, so I think that, you know, everything that you're saying is 100% accurate to what the researchers found. Um, these steps, whether it was added in during a break or it wasn't just about taking a break necessarily, but even if you have a meeting where you say, hey, instead of us meeting in an office, why don't we go for a walk while we're talking? Or if you say, you know, I'm gonna turn off my camera for this meeting because I don't need to be on, on camera and go for a walk with my, you know, AirPods in, whatever, right? Uh, that those different ways of adding steps to your day can be useful. Um, and so the takeaway for me was that you would think that the more you're moving around, that maybe you're burning more energy, so by the end of the day you would be more tired, but actually getting up and moving around kind of invigorates you and gives you more energy. And when you feel more energized at the end of the day as opposed to more depleted, you're actually more likely to do things at the end of the workday after work is over that allow you to recover. So whether that's like relaxing or mastering a new skill, like you wanna learn how to knit or you're like doing a puzzle um, or spending time with your family, it gives you that energy to actually invest in yourself and the things that you like to do. And then moving forward from that, when you go to bed, you're looking back over the course of your day and you've gotten more movement, you've been, you know, you feel productive and energized at the end of the workday and you've been able to recover in a way that you value. Um, you basically look back on it and say, this day was more balanced than if you hadn't had gotten that boost of energy from taking those steps. So the thing that's really nice about this is that the outcome isn't just the energy, it's also the balance, right? So you feel more balanced, you feel better about your work and life balance, you feel more, um, happy with the way your life and your was split up in the day and that's a huge win because everyone wants more balance everyone talks about that it's such a popular hot topic right now that if we can just increase our steps to make ourselves feel more balanced that can really make a big difference so if you're a leader for example you can kind of lead by example in this right so if you are with a team if you've got a team that is maybe struggling with work-life balance or just in general you want to continue to introduce more wellness focused behavior on your team you can start making your one-on-ones walking meetings uh, you can tell them that you are doing this and even if they don't want to walk that's fine but like letting people know that oh i'm going to take this for a walk is there anything that i need to take notes on before i start my walk or what have you so that way you're setting an example of the type of behavior to allow people to bring in movement throughout their day and we also talk about zoom fatigue Doing these kinds of walking meetings can help reduce Zoom fatigue because you're not going to be on a camera for that, right? You're going to be just on the phone listening and talking and having that that type of interaction, which can be really helpful and valuable as well. So there's kind of like a, a way to combine a bunch of this research to help you with your work-life balance. You've got your movement in, you've got exercise happening, um, you're feeling more balanced, and your Zoom fatigue is lower. Like, win-win all around. Yeah. And, and just to um, you know, make it clear, although this study looked at steps and tracking steps, 
The real takeaway, if you back up off of it, the mode of exercise is really less important. It's more about getting movement that you find energizing and um, and that actually gives you that boost. So if you have trouble, you know, uh, doing extra steps, or uh, you're maybe someone from an ability perspective is not able to take steps. Any kind of movement that you can do that makes you feel that invigoration should have the same impact. So while this study looked at steps, it doesn't necessarily have to be steps. It's like getting up, getting motion, or even you know doing sitting motions could be invigorating as well. So it's really about incorporating more movement into your workday, whatever that looks like for you. And that should lead to greater feelings of energy and then greater recovery and then greater balance, which um, as Patricia was saying, really um, is something people are looking to try to gain more of as that becomes a little more challenging in a, in a work from home environment for some. Yeah, it has been definitely more challenging because when you think about work from home, a lot of people are feeling very, uh, they're like trapped in these back-to-back -back meetings and so it's harder to get up and move around. They're trapped in these video calls. So I think this research is huge because it couples nicely, like I said, with the Zoom fatigue and some other break literature that you can kind of pose all of these things and make a huge impact with a very little effort, really. Um, you don't, all that has to happen, um, even though people hate breaking these patterns, is have less back-to-back -back meetings, <laughs> have less camera time, and move a little more. Like, yeah. not expensive by any stretch. Definitely something you can implement across any organization, any team. Yeah, balance doesn't have to be some trendy secret formula. Um, sometimes it's really basic stuff like getting up, moving around, having some breaks or time to do that and role modeling that for others can help you to be able to invest in yourself more at the end of the day and feel better about your whole day. So we're gonna go and encourage you to go get moving. Yeah. And thank you so much for listening and watching our video. Subscribe to our channel so you can see the next video. Thanks everyone.